Hello, my name is Jeremy and I'm a product specialist at Abstract. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to the Materialize Image project type in Instamat Studio. Instamat has the ability to take a single image and turn it into a complete PBR material that reacts naturally in a physically based 3D environment. This means that from a single image, Instamat is able to quickly generate all the texture map information needed for a full PBR material, and even generate multiple variations of that material, giving it procedural capabilities. We call this process materializing an image. Let's take a look. To create a material from a single image, create a new project and choose materialize image. All we need to do is give the material a name, drag in the image we would like to turn into a material, and select Create Project. Instamat will now automatically generate all the material channels needed to create a complete PBR material. Here we are presented with Instamat Studio's Materialize Image Interface. On the left, we have our Graph Library, Package Management, and Viewport Settings panels. The Graph Library contains all the nodes in Instamat's built-in library or the user library. The Package Management panel contains all the related projects and resources in the current Instamat package. The Viewport Settings panel provides controls for the 3D viewport, such as the camera, environment, and render settings. In the middle, we have our 3D viewport and 2D image viewer displayed side by side. This allows us to get instant feedback on how the material is being generated. We can view the material in a 3D physically lit environment while also being able to quickly inspect its various channels and the original input image at the same time. We can enable or disable either the viewport or image viewer with the buttons in the toolbar. We can also change the orientation of the split between the two with the split orientation button. On the right, we have the various materialized image settings. Each of these settings are used to dial in and tweak how the material is being generated. Let's begin by adjusting the input image to improve the materialized result. Materials are generally constructed using a square aspect ratio. Instamat automatically fit the image into a square aspect ratio. However, this resulted in the pebbles looking squished. We can adjust the input crop settings to manipulate the crop of the input image to restore more natural looking pebbles. Next, we need to make the material tileable. To visualize the tiling of material in the viewport, we can use the number button in the viewport toolbar to set the UV scale to 2. Continuing to press the button will adjust the UV scale up to 5. To view the tiling in the image viewer, we can adjust the tiling mode. Click the square button in the image viewer toolbar to bring up the tiling mode menu. We can choose between infinite and cross tiling arrangements. We can highlight the border of the central image where the seams are by clicking the highlighter icon. The image viewer will automatically fit the image within the size of the viewer. To turn this off, we can toggle the scale image automatically button to freely navigate around the image. This will automatically zoom the image to a one-to-one -one scale. To pan, left-click and drag the image. To zoom, right-click or use the mouse wheel. To fit the image into the bounds of the image viewer, press the F key. To make an image tileable, we can use the Input Seamless category. Here, we can find the various modes used to make an image seamless. The image-based mode uses conventional image offset and masking techniques to make the input image seamless. The synthesis and Poisson modes use image synthesis technology to generate new image information to make the input image seamless. In this case, I'm going to use the image-based mode and adjust the mask softness and curve to visually remove the seams. There's another way to improve the input image for materialization. Instamat's Neural Super Resolution uses AI to increase both the resolution and the fidelity of the input image. This is a great way to restore detail from a low-resolution photo before creating a material. Now that our image is seamless, let's focus on the base color map. The base color map determines the color of our material. Creating a material from a photo is useful because of all the incredible detail we can extract from the image. But in the case of the base color map, not all detail from a photo is useful. In this case, we're talking about the highlights and shadows. 
For our base color channel, we need to remove any baked in highlights or shadows so that our material will act naturally in any lighting scenario. We can do this in a few ways. The Input Color Equalizer category allows us to control the luminance, hue, and chrominance values of the input image. This is useful if you need to level out the input image's color and value information for a more consistent result. Another way to remove shadows from our base color map is by using Shadow Cancellation. The Base Color Shadow Cancellation category gives us parameters to remove shadows from the input image, effectively flattening out the base color map. To finish up our base color processing, we can open up the Base Color category to remove the color tint from the photo for a more natural look. Now that our input image has been prepared and our base color map has been set up, let's adjust some viewport settings to properly visualize the material. To remove aliasing artifacts from the viewport, I'll enable MIP mapping with the checker icon. I'll also increase the UV scale to 3 so that we can view the material at a larger scale. Instamet has generated a height map used to displace or push out the surface our material is placed on. To better visualize this, let's increase the tessellation level and displacement factor in the viewport settings panel. Now we can see that our height map is displacing the surface of our rounded cube preview mesh. Currently, our material has lots of jagged edges, and the overall volume of each rock seems to be lost in the high-frequency detail. Let's focus on adjusting this by working on our height and normal map settings. A height map is a grayscale map that depicts where the surface of a mesh can be displaced to simulate additional detail on a 3D model. Lighter values signify where areas push out, while darker values sink in. By the way, it's possible to visualize the different channels of a material on a mesh in the 3D viewport. We can do this by clicking on the viewport and hitting the C key. We can also choose a channel in the Solo Material Channel menu under the Environment Settings in the Viewport Settings panel. We can return to PBR mode with our full material by hitting the M key. The reason why we're getting jagged shapes is because our height map contains lots of high frequency information and there isn't enough tessellation or subdivisions of our geometry to smoothly visualize it all. The height category allows us to control how the height map is being generated. We can bring up the softness or blur amounts to remove the high frequency information from the height map. This simplifies the data to represent more general shapes and volumes, leaving the high frequency details for the normal map. The normal map provides our material with lighting information. Where the height map might contain more general shapes and forms, the normal map typically contains more of the medium and high frequency details of the material. Immediately, we can see that Instamet has extracted all the high frequency data from our input image and represented it using the red, green, and blue channels of the normal map. With the normal category, we can control the intensities of the high, medium, and low frequencies from the input image on the normal map to dial in our desired result. Similarly to the height map, we can soften the high frequency detail to remove more of the jagged edges from our material. We can increase the medium frequency amount to bring out the volume of the pebbles. And increasing the low frequency amount brings out more of the form of the underlying soil and ground shape. Already the shapes and volumes of our pebbles are looking much nicer. Now that we've dialed in the height and normal maps of our material, let's use that information to bring back some of our shadows. But this time, instead of putting the shadows in the base color channel, we can use ambient occlusion. When rendering an image, calculating shadows requires a lot of computational power. This becomes difficult for real-time applications, especially on mobile hardware. Instead of leaning on the render engine to generate the shadows for our material, we can use the ambient occlusion map. The ambient occlusion map is where we can represent all the contact shadows that accumulate in the crevices and cavities of our material. A separate map also allows us to have more freedom over the look and intensities of our shadows by separating it out into a different channel. 
By removing the shadows from the input image, we can now generate more accurate shadow information by having Instamat create them based on our dialed in height map. Not only that, but the ambient occlusion map provides additional data to other effects we can apply to our material. We can view the material's ambient occlusion map in the viewport by dialing in the Material AO Intensity slider under the Render Settings in the Viewport Settings panel. From the ambient occlusion category, we can dial in the radius, bias, height scale, and overall strength of the generated ambient occlusion. Now that we have created our base material, Instamat Studio makes it easy to enhance its realism by adding common effects like dirt, dust, and water. These effects take advantage of the generated maps from the materialization process and are a great way to add some finishing touches to the material. Notice how the effect is adding dirt to natural places that it would accumulate. However, you might find that the effect isn't as intense as expected. To adjust this, be sure to increase the Ambient Occlusion Intensity slider to take more advantage of our generated Ambient Occlusion map when increasing the dirt level. The Grunge slider is great to add an additional level of dirt and grime. The dust effect applies a thin layer of dust to the material, which helps solidify all the different components and creates a more cohesive result. One of the most fun effects in Instamat is the ability to add water. With water, we can control the various properties, such as the water level, the density depth effect, and the wetness of the shore. We can even add raindrops that conform to the curvature of the material's surface. One benefit of using a project type such as the element graph, which uses nodes to create procedural materials, is that it allows us to generate an unlimited number of variations of the material. This means that we can reuse the work done for that project and create new versions of the material with minimal effort. Instamat lets us do the same with materials generated from a single image using image synthesis technology. This means that even though our material was created from a single static image, we can still create variations of it that can be blended together or reused in multiple projects. With the Input Synthesis category, we can choose from various modes to control the image synthesis. With the mode set to Synthesis Advanced Slow High Quality, Instamat will generate new pixel information to create a new version of our material. By default, the preview switch is enabled due to the synthesis advanced mode requiring more processing power. Once we've dialed in our settings, we can disable the preview switch to see our result. By changing the seed, Instamat can now generate countless variations of our scattered stone gravel, creating a procedural material out of a single static image. Now that we've created our material, let's look at how we can integrate it into other Instamat Studio projects. First, let's take a look at how we can utilize our gravel to add some stones to our material layering project. Material layering projects make it easy to blend materials together by utilizing a material's height map. Simply drag the material from the package management panel into the layer stack, and Instamat will automatically integrate it into the project, creating a natural blend between the other materials in the stack. With material layering, we have all the features and functionality of Instamat's layering engine at our disposal, like the ability to add a color match filter. We can then use the previous layer's color information to integrate the gravel more naturally. With the mesh mask 
Builder, we can use the dynamically generated ambient occlusion map from the previous layers in the stack to place our gravel where it would naturally accumulate in the crevices of the ground. Next, let's take a look at how we can integrate our material into a node-based project in Instamat's canvas. By dragging our materialized image project into an element graph, we can easily incorporate it into a node-based workflow. Blending materials is as easy as using the Material Blend Height node. This node lets us naturally blend two materials together by utilizing their height maps. And just like in material layering, it also has color matching features. And because we're now in an element graph, we can take advantage of all the powerful nodes in Instamat's graph library. Notice here how we can create a mask to provide more control over where our materials blend together. We can then continue to blend more materials to create a more complex result. And because everything is procedural, including our materialized image project, we can use the seed to create an infinite amount of variations of our blended material. Thanks for watching this video on the materialized image project type in Instamat Studio. Instamat makes it possible to texture and create 3D assets with its many different approaches using its many different project types, whether it's texturing your assets and painting with an artist-friendly layer-based workflow or building fully procedural PBR materials in the element graph. Now to learn more about these project types, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Here you'll find an ever-expanding library of videos covering the ins and outs of Instamat. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, drop us a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. For the latest news about Instamat, please visit our website and follow us on Twitter. You can find all the links in the video description below. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.